I mean, good morning. I got a little confused there for a minute. Probably because life is so upside down, topsy turvy this, these days. Now, you might be thinking it's upside down because we're, you know, everything's different. We're staying at home to keep those that we love safe. But actually, we're turning things upside down this month at Upstreet Kids because Jesus changes everything. And that's especially true when it comes to humility, which is what we're going to be talking about. Now, humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Now, see this chocolate roll I have here? This, you know, ooey gooey, yummy chocolate roll. I deserve it. I exercised today. I worked hard getting up and getting breakfast for the kids, making sure that they, you know, did every, made their bed and all that stuff. I deserve to eat this. I really do. Can I have that? You want my chocolate roll? Yeah. You really, really want it? Here. There you go. Now, I deserve it, but I'm going to put Sam first. Now, humility could be the most upside down thing for all of us. Um, because let's be honest, it doesn't usually come naturally for us to put someone else first. That really flips things upside down. Now, I have a new friend that's going to be here today, virtually, not in real life, that I'd like you to meet. So everyone, I'd like you to say hi to Jacob. Hey, this is Jacob. Or, you know, just Jake. Is everyone okay? There was like an earthquake or something in my room. I didn't feel it when I was outside my room, but then when I came in the room, everything was turned upside down. My table, my bed, also known as my couch, my Ferrari, my sculpture. That's better. I don't know how this could have, wait a second. Is there such a thing as room quake? <laughs> yeah, that must be it. Anyway, I'm supposed to talk to you today about something called humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. So that means like doing stuff for others, I guess. Like my friend Chris, he's really good at humility. I mean, he humiliates me like all the time. Am I saying that right? Humiliate, humiliate, humiliate. He shows humility to me. He's super busy, but he always takes the time to put me first by playing his April Fool's surprises on me. Like the time he put my keys in Jello, Or the time he made me a tray of brownies. <sighs> brownies. And who can forget the old and screw the top off the salt surprise? <laughs> Chris is a funny guy. Hey. You know what I think? And this is just between you and me. Chris is the one who turned all my stuff upside down. It wasn't a room quake after all. This must have taken a really long time. I mean, he turned all my stuff upside down. I do need to call my mom. This must have taken a lot of work. I'm not sure that it's fair that Chris keeps playing all these April Fool's month surprises on me and I haven't even got him once. I don't deserve this. What I deserve is to get him back. <laughs> Was that my toaster? The story today is about Jesus when he prayed in the garden while his friends couldn't even stay awake to keep watch. Jesus didn't deserve that. I wonder what he did about it. Stay tuned. I'm gonna come up with a way to turn the tables on Chris. Chris is gonna notice when he goes in his room the tables aren't the way he remembered them. I'm gonna get the revenge I deserve. I'm gonna get the revenge I deserve, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, okay. 
This month, things are upside down because Jesus changes everything. And I am so glad that he does. That means we are free and we are forgiven. And that's why we're celebrating him today, even from our home. So why don't we all stand up together and let's sing out his love for us right now. You are above every other Your love amazes me You created every beautiful color For everyone to see I want the world to know I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me when we come together and we thank God and worship. So now it's time for a story time. So get comfortable, have a seat, and listen really closely. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 56. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been plotting to silence Jesus. He called us pretenders, snakes. On the Sunday before Passover, Jesus entered Jerusalem to great cheers from the crowds. But even as the crowds swarmed in to see what Jesus would do and say, one of Jesus' closest followers, Judas, went to the religious leaders with a very sneaky plan. What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? How about a cool 30 pieces of silver? Jesus knew these plans, but he also knew that his mission was to face those who hated him and let them take him without defending himself. He prepared his closest friends for this during a Passover meal and then afterwards led them out of the city toward the Mount of Olives. Judas had already left them. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The air cooled as the evening darkened. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter, the most outspoken of Jesus' friends, quickened his step and tightened his hand on the sword he was carrying. 
All the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. What I'm about to tell you is true. It will happen tonight. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. I may have to die with you, but I will never say I don't know you. Me too. Same. <sighs> By the time Jesus and his friends reached the Garden of Gethsemane, they were exhausted. Sit here while I go over there and pray. As the other disciples settled in on the cold, rough ground, Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him to a grove of ancient olive trees. The weight of what was coming pressed down on him. My soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. We're here for you. We got this. Prayers. The three friends found seats among the knotted tree roots, and Jesus went on a little further. Then suddenly, he fell down on the ground, face first into the dirt. Words poured out from deep inside. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But let what you want be done, not what I want. After a short time, Jesus returned to his friends. They had all fallen into restless sleep. Jesus touched Peter's arm. Huh? Just, uh, we're just, uh, we're just praying. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We'll stay awake this time. Got you covered. Again, Jesus threw himself down to pray. His pain was so deep, blood and sweat beaded on his forehead. My father, is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want be done. Jesus returned to his friends once more to find them still sleeping. The agony in his spirit forced Jesus to lay his heart out to God once more. He prayed the desperate words again, begging God to take away what was coming. And at the same time, revealing his complete trust in God's plan. Let what you want be done, not what I want. At last, Jesus knew the time had come. He returned to find Peter, James, and John buried deep in sleep. Beyond them, his other followers slept too. Are you still sleeping and resting? The disciples struggled through a fog of sleep, blinking and yawning. Below them, torchlight showed an angry mob climbing up the hill. The men were waving swords and clubs, shouting as they came. Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. Jesus' friends staggered to their feet, and Peter clutched his sword. As the mob marched closer, they could see the man in front of the mob. It was their friend Judas. Judas, what are you doing? The mob had been sent by the Jewish religious leaders. Judas had already explained to them that he would greet Jesus with a kiss, so they would know exactly which man to arrest. Greetings, teacher. Judas ignored the other disciples and went directly to Jesus, kissing him on the cheek in greeting. Jesus drew back and looked Judas directly in the face. Friend, do what you came to do. The mob surged forward as the disciples just stood there, frozen and confused. As men grabbed Jesus, Peter suddenly sprang to life, awkwardly drawing his sword. Should we use our swords? Peter didn't wait for an answer, but he struck out wildly. His blade sliced right through the ear of the high priest's servant. Oh! Stop this! Jesus touched the servant's ear. Immediately, he was healed. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Jesus turned back to the mob and the men who held him. They hovered there, uncertain, in the flickering light of their torches. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courtyard teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that the words of the prophets would come true. No one could respond to Jesus. Instead, they arrested him and led him away. And his friends who said they'd be with him through anything ran away. Jesus made the choice that would bring life to everyone, 
but that would cost him everything. Judas might have thought that this had gone according to his plan, but was actually part of God's plan all along. It has always been God's plan to send Jesus to be our Savior. Now the time had come for Jesus to put God's plan into motion, and Jesus followed through. He showed the perfect example of humility. He put us first when he died for us on the cross for our sins. We can follow Jesus' example too when we choose to put others first. But you and I know that's not always so easy. Even Jesus had to ask God to help him. So you and I need to ask God for help if we want to put others first too, even when it's hard. Let's pray together and ask God to help us with that. Dear God, it's so amazing to see that Jesus was such a perfect example of humility. He took the punishment of our sins on that cross so that we could come before you and we could, you know, live with you for eternity. I pray right now that you will be with um, all of my friends, you know, that are, are stuck at home right now, that are listening here today, that you will help them during times when we feel when we feel selfish, we feel like doing our own thing and thinking of ourselves, that you will help us to remember what Jesus did for us on that cross and that we will, we will be better at putting others first. We ask this in your name. Amen. Isn't it great that we can always go to God in prayer and ask him for those things that are hard? Why don't we go and check in with Jake to see what's happening with him? Somebody's going to get a mustard-filled donut later, and I'm finally going to get what I deserve. <laughs> hey, did you know that Jesus didn't deserve all that stuff that happened to him? Like when his friends ditched him when he needed them, and when those people arrested Jesus even though he never did anything he wasn't supposed to? And then, when he was put on that cross, I mean, what? Jesus could, like, calm a storm with his hand and bring dead people back to life. Why do you let all that bad stuff happen to him? Turns out, it was all a part of the plan. When God created the world a whole bunch of years ago, he knew people were gonna need help if they were gonna have a relationship with him. So he told people he was sending someone who would have to pay for all the stuff they did wrong. And that someone was Jesus. But it's not like Jesus wanted to go through all that bad stuff. In the garden, he was like, God, any chance there's a different way to save the world and stuff? But then Jesus was like, it's not about what I want, God, because what you want is better. So what did Jesus do to his friends in the garden who let him down? He put them first. And what did Jesus do to those people who arrested him for no reason? He put them first. And what did Jesus do for you, me, and the whole world? He put us first. It's kind of an upside down way of doing things. Putting somebody else first for no reason when they don't earn it or when they may not even deserve it. I bet we can put people first like Jesus did. You know, we could let someone else pick what restaurant to go to or what video game to play. We could give up our place in line sometimes. Or when someone surprises us by turning our room upside down, we could choose to not get even. So here's the one thing I learned today. Put others First, it's not about what we deserve. It's not about what we want. What God wants is better. So, April Fool's Month or not, I'm gonna put people first. And Chris, if you're watching, keep the surprises coming, but I won't be taking my revenge. I'll just be sitting here, getting what I truly deserve. A delicious mustard-filled donut. Ah, that's some good stuff right there. That's some good mustard. See you next time. All right, so this is our theme for today. Let me get this right. Put others first. Guys, can you say this with me? Put others first. So mom and dads, if you're watching at home, every, every day or every Sunday, I give the kids like this is their main thing. This is what when mom or dad or grandma or whoever they come with says, what did you learn in kids church today? That they, the kids will have the sentence to answer. So this one is put others first. So the question is, what does it look like to 
put others first? Um, well, it could look a little different every day and in every situation. It could, boys, girls, it could be something as simple as playing a video game that you don't especially like, but that your friend really loves or your brother or sister really likes. This is one that happens in our home sometimes. Or maybe it's um, when we're not in, uh, when we're not social distancing, maybe it's happily going to a restaurant that isn't your favorite because it's your mother's favorite and it's her birthday. Or maybe it's even playing a game the way that your, your friend plays, even though it's not how you like to play it. It comes down to something that we say around here all the time at Kids Church, treat others the way you want to be treated. And when you put others first, you show them just how much you value them. Now, we, uh, the Apostle Paul, he wrote about that in a letter that we call the Book of Philippians. And this is our memory verse for the month, for this, the month of April. And you guys say, can you see it behind me? Not really. Um, there we go. I'm going to read it to you, okay? Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value, value others more than yourselves. And that's found in Philippians 2, 3. There it is, right there. Be humble and value others more than yourself. So our bottom line in Kids Church this week is put others first. Now normally in Kids Church, this is where we would play a little game. And uh, so we're gonna, we are gonna play a little game and I'm gonna go get my, um, my children and we're gonna, we're gonna figure out how to do this together. So I'll be right back. All right, so we are going to play a game to kind of help us learn our memory verse. Now, when every month at Kids Church, we have a new verse of the month that we play games with to kind of help us learn to learn it. So usually I like to start off with this game in the beginning because it's a helpful one where the kids can still read the verse and we kind of get to know it. So it is a game of hot potato. Now, normally this little potato makes a little noise, but of course the batteries just died and, uh, yeah, so, Sam. so the types that we need, of course, I don't have here at home. So I have a little, uh, little music ready to play here. So we're gonna give this a try, and I'm gonna pass it from person to person, and when the music stops, whoever is holding the verse has to say it. So we're gonna do a, two a few rounds here at my house. You said I get me! You said I get me! No, 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 no! I can't do this while I'm holding. Alright, so don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you're proud. Instead, be humble, value others more than yourselves. So why don't I already went? Why don't you two go back and forth? And that way I can control the music a bit easier. And whoever is holding it, when the music stops, you have to play it, okay? You ready? Come on, guys. All right, Sam, can you say the verse? Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble, value others more than yourself. Where's it found? Philip. Philippians? Philippians 2, 3, nine. All right. So, why don't we uh, do one more round and see what happens, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Pierre. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. All right, guys. There it is. Why don't you play this a few rounds with your family, and maybe you could, you could learn the verse. So here is my challenge for you. I would love for you guys on our private Facebook page to post a few um, videos of you guys playing this game with this verse. Anyway, hope you're all doing good. I, I miss you all, and I can't wait for us to be together again. Bye.